Yeah, just call him and tell him we'll call him back in a couple minutes. All right, uh, Terry Collins will join us at 5. Uh, we weren't expecting this right now, but we'll take it. Uh, that is, we have a chance to talk to the Jet General Manager, John Idzik, who joins us now. John, Mike Francesa on the Fan Yes Network in New York. How are you? All right, Mike. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Um, Good. Nice to talk to you. Good to talk to you too, Mike. Um, I got a lot of questions, so we'll get this. I know you have a uh, a phone call in a couple of minutes, but we'll try to get to as many as we can since I'll I don't get a chance to talk to the Jet hierarchy too often. But uh, John, how would you how would you uh, say coming off your draft? How was the decision making different, or what was the decision making process, especially in the dynamics between you and the head coach on how the players were picked? Well, I guess in the simplest form, Mike, our axiom going into the draft is going to be uh, select the best players. And I, I know that a lot of people hear that, but I think our, our draft was uh, evidence of that, that uh, regardless of position, we're, we're going to uh, put a lot of preparation into uh, evaluating the talent, ranking the talent, and then when it comes to draft day and you're ready to turn in a card, you feel like you're drafting the best players, and that's precisely what we did. Well, my point is uh, how much influence did Rex Ryan have in the selection of these players? Okay, yeah, Rex had uh, obviously had a lot of influence, and so did his coaching staff. They worked hand in hand with our college and pro staffs. It was a collective effort. We all went out on the road. We attended pro days. We went to the Indy Combine interviews. Uh, so Rex and uh, his entire staff were involved in this whole process, right on down to draft day, uh, bringing the coaches in, discussing guys that uh, we had grouped as alternatives at each pick right on through round seven. Uh, so um, Rex and uh, and his staff were involved every step of the way. It, it, I'm going to figure there was a dispute somewhere along the line in the room. If there was, were you the deciding vote? There really weren't disputes because, you know, you pour through so many of those scenarios going into it. We spent uh, long, long days and nights going into it with Rex, and uh, he was a trooper. I mean, he he was juggling off season, our off-season program and preparation for that and eventually getting into the first phase along with our lengthy uh, draft meetings, and he didn't miss any of it. So with that comes, with all the, the discussion and, and pouring through what could happen, we felt very well prepared. So I can say in all honesty, Mike, we didn't have disputes uh, in the draft room. It was more like uh, we, we were ready for whatever was presented to us, and uh, we felt like we, uh, we, we had a good draft as a result. So everybody was on board with, with the two first-round picks with Geno Smith, the entire room was on board with each of the picks. Yes, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Okay. Um, going forward, as far as Rex Ryan's future, you inherited Rex Ryan. Uh, will you decide his future, or will that be you and the owner? How will Rex Ryan's fate be decided uh, in the future? Well, I'm, I'm put in charge for, for making the decisions. Obviously, we're going to consult. Any big uh, decisions are going to be in consult with uh, our owner, Woody Johnson. Uh, you know, Neil will be involved, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll discuss everything. Of course, Rex is involved in, in a lot of the big decisions. Uh, so uh, we, we do things by committee here. But, yeah, ultimately, uh, you know, Woody's put me in charge of making the decisions. But you, it's unusual for a guy to come in and inherit a head coach. That's an unusual situation. Did you find that an unusual situation? No, not really. I mean, if uh, if you look at it, Rex is uh, an accomplished, experienced coach. He knows a lot of things here with our roster. So I viewed that when you come in, Mike, in, in late January, right on the heels of a postseason run, uh, and you, you and I literally flew right to the Senior Bowl, uh, it, I think it's a great advantage to have a uh, head coach that is ingrained in your roster, uh, can, can bring me up to speed very quickly. And plus, he's uh, – uh, we have similar backgrounds. We, we have, uh, we're cut from a similar cloth. Our, our father's been involved in, in the game. We've, we're lifelong NFLers. So uh, I think it was uh, – I, I viewed Rex as an asset coming in uh, to this job. Uh, but it's, isn't it hard to decide what was 
Rex's past and what was the ex-general manager's past, they were kind of tied at the hip. Now it's being declared that you've come in to clean up a mess. Well, Rex helped make that mess. So how do you separate the two? Well, I, I guess I don't look back, Mike. I can't speak to anything that happened before me. Uh, I can only look forward. And, and when I came on board, I spent a lot of time with Rex. And we, uh, we developed joint plans. We, we evaluated our roster together. Uh, you know, we, we prepared for free agency together. We prepared for the draft together. We executed free agency together. We executed the draft together. So um, I just looked forward. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't speak to the past. So that means means that you don't look at Rex Ryan as being on a like next year being an important year for Rex Ryan. He has a long you look at it as being that you and he are starting over together and he should be judged that way rather than as someone who's been here for 4 years. That's accurate. That's uh, I I look at Rex Ryan as as the head coach of the New York Jets and uh that we are we're working jointly to improve this team every day. Except he hasn't gotten a contract extension, has he? Yeah, well, I'm not going to discuss any contract matters, but uh, let's just suffice it to say I'm happy to, to be with Rex right now with the Jets. Okay, but I mean, I just uh, – so you guys are on the same – so this is a team effort, Idzik, Ryan, team effort. That's what – That is correct. You couldn't okay. be any more accurate. Except yep. he is a little farther along in this process than you are. He's a little farther along, and again, I look at that as an advantage. That uh, you know, he was able to bring me up to speed right. with a lot of things in the organization, with with our roster, with our coaches. We went through some um, staff changes that way, uh, so we've experienced a, a lot in three plus months. Uh, so he uh, Rex certainly helped accelerate uh, my learning of of uh, the Jets and what's going on here. What is your philosophy for the franchise? Do you Wonderful. The Jets have been very outspoken. They've been very flamboyant. You like that style, or is your style a little more buttoned down? Well, my personal style, Mike, I'm sure you've observed this since I've been here. I'm pretty understated. I, I tend to like to let our actions do our talking for us. Uh, so that uh, I would just encourage our fans and everybody to, to watch what the, uh, the Jets do and not necessarily uh, hear what they say. So does that mean that Rex Ryan's no longer able to make f- outrageous predictions or is he still free to make them? No, Rex will be Rex. I mean, he's very charismatic. He's very, he's funny. I told him uh, when you're in these meetings for long hours, and and we we went through a marathon in in uh, preparing for the draft. It's refreshing to to have his personality and humor in the room. So we certainly wouldn't want to dampen that at all. So I mean, it sounds like you guys. It's a little different. Rex has been very flamboyant, very outspoken, outrageously outspoken. But you've got a little different style. So don't you think those two could collide? Do you think they'll be able? to live together. No, I think we both have the, the same vision in mind, and, and you know our, our message is going to be one of uh, uh, of competition, daily competition, improve the roster. We are joined. We are linked at that. And the way we present that may be different, but uh, the inherent qualities that we want uh, in our roster, in the organization, are, are congruent. They're the same. Talking with John Itzik, the, J- the Jets general manager, um, the quarterback situation now, you have five quarterbacks. You today called it a five-man competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that mean that you are looking at all five as being equal at the present time? Well, you, you know what, Mike? You don't, you don't enter with any preconceived notions. You know, obviously, Mark has a lot of experience in the league. He has a lot of experience on this team. David has a lot of experience in the league, and he's new to this team. Greg has had uh, limited experience, but he's, it's been with this team. So we, we've got Amir Gino comes in brand new, and Matt is a young guy trying to cut his teeth into the league. So everyone, you know, they may have various levels, and you all you try to do is press those levels upward. To, to maximize what they are, and then you can make very well-informed uh, decisions when it comes time to uh, to establishing your final roster. That's all this this is about. Will Will uh, Geno Smith be on this roster July first? Will Geno Smith be? I would expect Geno Smith to be on the roster July first. Will Mark Sanchez be on the roster July first? I, I would expect our quarterbacks to be. Competing, and we'll take it through the offseason. I would expect there's nothing 
that in my mind that would say, uh, you know, Mark shouldn't be. So, but uh, th- all this said, I don't want to get into predicting uh, whether it be July first. So you have no plan to cut August first. Well, let's get to it. Do you, are you going to cut Mark Sanchez after June first? I, again, Mike, I'm not going to make any predictions. I, I, well, I, would, expect, well, well, I would expect Mark to to uh, compete with the other quarterbacks, and given his track record and what he brings to the table, I would expect Mark to be here. Well, wouldn't but that be an less, easy? Uh, wouldn't that be I an easy answer, though, John? Wouldn't it be an easy thing to say yes if you know he's going to be? If you have plans for him, wouldn't it be easy to say he'd be on the roster after June first? No, I would rather say uh, I would rather say, Mike, let's let it play out. Let's not try to predict things. Let that the uh, play on the field answer the question and not somebody in April trying to predict what happens in July or August or September. So you're telling me that Mark could now, between now and June 1st, decide his fate on the football field? I think we all decide our fates. It's a, it's a cumulative process. We do it day to day, week to week, month to month. And all I'm saying is just let it play out. Well, I, I, I'm puzzled here. What could Mark do in the next couple of weeks that would make you feel that whether he is going to be on your roster in a month? Well, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't, like I said, I would expect, given what Mark has done and uh, what type of quarterback he is and how he's approaching this offseason, I would expect him to, to be here. But, again, let's let it play out. Okay, so that means there is a chance he may be cut. Because you didn't say he wasn't, so I got. I mean, it's either one I, or the other. I guess other. what I'm saying, Mike, we're not going to make any decisions or definitive statements at this time. You know, I think I, I would rather let the play determine that and and uh, not try to go in with any preconceived notions. So it would be would it be unwise for us to call Mark Sanchez the quarterback of the Jets right now? He has been that for the last four years. Would we be wrong to call him the starting quarterback of the New York Jets right now? We Yes, I, I wouldn't say we have a starter right now that uh, we're going to let it play out. We, we've got, uh, we feel like we've got quality competition at the position and let it play out. John, what kind of team did you inherit? You've been around the NFL a long time. Is this a rebuilding team? Is this Was this a mess you inherited? Is this a good team you inherited? What did you inherit? I inherited a New York Jet team that I think is, is that there. There's a lot of young talent here. There's a lot of uh, experience. You know, we've got a left tackle that's been very accomplished, a center very accomplished. You mentioned Mark Sanchez. He's won playoff games here. We've got some guys on this roster that have that have done some things. It, now it's up to us to fortify that. We're going to fortify it with positional competition. We're going to try to build the depth on this team, and uh, we're, we're going to compete. And we've we've had. Uh, We've had several, uh, you know, drafts of late that, uh, you know, Muhammad Wilkerson, uh, Kenrick uh, Ellis, uh, all these guys, uh, Quentin Copels. There's some talent on this team, Mike, and now it's up to us to, to develop that talent and, and reach our potential. So do you think this can be a playoff team this year? Uh, again, I'm not in the business of predicting. Well, you either, I mean, do you think you have a rebuild? Usually, I don't think people have a problem terming their team either a contending team, a rebuilding team. And if it's a rebuilding team, that's not an issue. I mean, is it a rebuilding team? Uh, I don't call it a rebuilding team. I think uh, each and every year you build your team. Every year is different, and we're not unlike, shoot, the uh, world champion uh, Baltimore Ravens. They're building their team for 2013. We're in the same mode. Well, I mean, John, you're here for a reason. They just fired the general manager. There's a reason why they thought this was a problem. I mean, you're not taking over the 49ers. I mean, the team had an issue. You just got here as a new general manager for a reason. That's correct. That's correct. And, and uh, I'm here to try to, to establish a firm foundation on this team, which I think we're, we're going to get, and, uh, and try to build something for sustained uh, success over a long period of time. So no starting quarterback, and you and Rex are a team right down the line. We are a team. Yes, we are. Well, be careful with that because that didn't, that didn't serve the last general manager too well. He thought he had a team right down the middle too, so be careful with that. All right, Mike. Thank I'm you, optimistic. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. I have to All go because right. he told me he only had till 47. I appreciate him coming on and answering the questions. Thank you for coming on, John. I appreciate it. Uh, that was very nice of the Jets to put him on today. Got to as many as I could, folks. I had a little time limitation. Uh, we're back after this. Hey. 